shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part 4 of the P40F build. So, now that the cockpit is sorted out, it's time to start paying a little bit of attention to the exterior of the P40. And that means it's time for a tropical paint test. So, for this, I want to caveat up front that I am not in this for 100% fidelity. This is not a paint Nazi type of situation. I'm more going for what I think looks coolest and best together. So first up, I have the trio from Guns, their C21 Middlestone, their C369 Dark Earth, and their C370 Azure Blue. Now it's pretty well known that Guns' Azure Blue is a little bit dark and a little bit purpley. So that's something to kind of watch out for as we are spraying. I think the middle stone might be a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit green tinted. But that honestly may also be just the darkness from inside the bottle and kind of the weird looking lid. So, who knows. Next up we've got the same trio from AK Real Colors. Theirs look like this. Um, I think the Azure looks really good. I think the Dark Earth looks pretty solid, maybe a tiny, tiny bit light. And the middle stone is, wow, super caramely. I'm not thinking that's right, but it is dramatic, so it's still in contention. And then we've got the trio from MRP. MRP 119, Azure Blue. MRP 108, Dark Earth and MRP-121 Middlestone. So I'm gonna whip up a paint mule and we're gonna see what's what. And again, this is not looking out for 100% accuracy. If I wanted to go down an accuracy hole, I would not be building Trumpeter's P40F. <laughs> uh, it is more to see what I think looks best to my eyes and what would look best on a finished model. So with that, I will be right back and we will do some spray testing. Okay, shit has been sprayed. And now we can talk about it. So again, over here we've got guns, over here we've got AK, and along the fuselage here we've got MRP. Now, this is a really, really tough decision, except for a couple of them. So first of all, the AK Middlestone is out. That is just, it looks like pumpkin spice or some bullshit. The Dark Earths, I'm really hesitant to kind of get rid of any one of them, but I think, again, the AK goes out because it's lighter than the MRP, but it's also super saturated compared to the guns. And looking at the middle stones, I, I, like, I love the tone of the guns, but it seems a little bit dark. I love the lightness of the MRP, but it seems a little bit too fleshy. So this might be a case on, honestly, both the Dark Earth and the middle stone where I do a mix of the guns and the MRP to kind of strike a middle distance of both of those. Now, looking at the Azure... It's really, really tough to tell from these, as separate as they are, how different they are. Like, you know, you might confuse these two for the same just looking at them on the screen. Obviously, the AK looks a lot lighter. But I took the liberty of painting them all next to each other so we can really see the differences. So again, we've got guns, AK, MRP. Now, of these, the guns is way too purple. You know, it's basically lavender at this point. The AK is, I think, not purple enough. I mean, honestly, this might have been a really good color to use on the uh, on the P47M when I was working on it. And the MRP, I think, looks pretty dang cool. Uh, Azure definitely has that sort of, like, blue, slightly purplish tint. It definitely has a strong saturation component compared to other colors that you see, you know, other undercolor other underside colors. So, yeah, I think that one's definitely a lock, um, for sure. It's just a matter of figuring out what I want to do with these upper surfaces. So, yeah. Guess I need to figure that out. Okay, so now that I've got the colors figured out, 
I want to go ahead and get this Reed Eater scoop just dealt with. I'm not quite happy with the colors here compared to what the colors are going to be. And I also wanted to add some chipping around the mouth here. And so that needs some LP11. All right, the silver's had a few minutes to set up, so it is time to do our frisket masking. Kind of been through this once already with the cockpit sills. Put a little bit on, dab it off. Now for this one, I'm going to start off with some MRP Dark Earth before switching out to the guns. The MRP is a little bit darker, a little bit more saturated, so it'll form a nice base. But I kind of like the more desaturated tone that the guns has going on. Now it's time for the guns on top. Okay, next up, before I get into the Azure, I'm going to do something I've been experimenting with on the mule, and that is to use some RLM 76 as a bit of a base for the Azure. The blue, slightly greenish tint kind of calms down that purple a little bit. It seems to work pretty nicely you can kind of see in here. Okay, next up, we're gonna do a little bit of international blue. Break it up a little bit. Okay, now we can add the Azure. Okay, so now that we've got the outside colors of the scoop painted, let's go ahead and remove this frisket and see how we did. Been pretty good so far. Just got the silicone brush to get. Okay, so there we have it. A fun beat up. Radiator face. Excellent. All right, with the chin scoop pretty much sorted out, I'm just about ready to close up the fuselage shafts, but I'm not quite there. I still have one small element to deal with, and that is the exhaust. So I was looking at these a bit more carefully, and if you look down in here, there's these big ass ledges just sitting here, right? And I'm pretty sure on a real aircraft, A, those probably aren't there. Um, B, if they are, they sure as hell aren't camo colors. They're going to be the colors of the engine or, you know, engine mount framing, etc. And so I have masked them off to go ahead and paint them a dark metallic color along with the actual exhaust manifold mounting plates. These have a 
well, they had ejector pin marks. I've, I think I've removed the worst of them, but there's, you know, with all the exhaust stacks and everything in here, there's not going to be that much that will be visible anyway. So, yeah. But basically, in order to paint this, I have gone in and masked off every opening to the outside, so when I come in and spray from in here, we're totally safe. It's mostly a matter of making sure all the tape lays down properly, etc., etc. All right. So, typically with metallics, I would go the full nines with like a gloss black and all that stuff, but again, this is like a dirty, darker metallic, and we're doing it on the inside, so eh. I'm going to use some MRP NATO black instead. Their NATO black is more of a brown black, which I think fits well with like a, you know, dirty engine exhaust area scenario. Do, do, do. Honestly, this section here, which is middle stone, is the main reason I decided to mask all this off. I'd be comfortable putting a metallic over dark earth because it's already a dark enough tone. But I can see it being really sketchy over the sort of light yellow tan thing that Middlestone is. Now, for this next bit, I'm going to leave just a little bit of the NATO black here in the cup. And I'm going to add some of this Moto T009, which it says is silver, but in my test sprays, it has been definitely a darker tone than that. All right, I think that looks a bit less gross. And run with it. Now it's time to grab these pieces and stick them into place. So just like that, and we've got the exhaust mounts ready to go. Okay, when it comes to closing the fuselage on this thing, the biggest challenges are going to be up here on the instrument panel combing and getting that cleaned up without getting the cockpit messy. And back here where the rear bulkhead hits the fuselage, because as you can see, it doesn't want to hit exactly properly. Now we can close this up like this. but it's not the easiest thing to work from underneath because we've got shit in the way. So I've been giving this a lot of thought. And I think what I'm going to do is before I close up the halves, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing sorted and fixed up against one of these bulkheads. And to do that, I'm going to use some UV glue. This stuff tends to be of limited utility for actually gluing models together. But for things like this where I want to get back in here and kind of do something quick and not have CA fogging mess things up, it works pretty well. Got to make sure everything aligns. Tail gear goes together like so. Damn. <laughs> Cool, so locking that in really did a good job because it kind of helped everything else lock in too. Nice. Okay, let's get this shit glued together. And first and foremost, I'm gonna start right back here on the spine right behind the cockpit. 
because that shit snapped into place pretty nice and I want to lock that in. So, some extra thin there. Borrow one of my airbrush cleaning brushes. Hit that seam from the inside too. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised how well the bulkhead there set up. I was getting ready for a fight after I saw the way it worked on the test fits. But everything seems to have gone okay. Nice of them to keep everything super accessible on the inside, at least up front here, while this is happening. Okay, the P40 fuselage is all closed up. Overall, it went together pretty well. I certainly wouldn't call it to me as Corsair or anything like that. But, for the most part, everything went together with some measure of authority. You know, especially I was worried, again, up here with the bulkhead and the heading into the rear of the fuselage, but that all went together with... A nice like snap of authority. We'll note though if you look really closely in here, gotta get it to focus, there's like a a ridge in the plastic itself right here. So that made gluing interesting and I'm gonna have to come in here and probably sand that down. I'm gonna have to fill in a little bit on some parts of the tail on the leading edge uh, just because Trumpeter put some sprue gates literally right on the inner surface of this and cleaning those up was uh, was a bit of a mess. Other than that, the big concern was the instrument panel combing, which I think has been dealt with pretty effectively. We still need to come in here and clean up that seam, but it's joined together nice and tight. So that's working well. Up here, this entire run on the top of the cowl, I'm not too worried about because I still need to come in here and sand down a little bit on the top because if you look at it from the side here, I've already sanded a bit, but there's like a little hump. You know, this, this is supposed to be more of like a straight thing before it dives down. And there's this little hump right here that still needs removing. And fortunately for everybody involved, there's no detail up here. This is all smooth. There's, you know, there's the fasteners along the sides, but this stuff up here, we can just knock that down with sanding sticks. Underside, overall pretty good. Uh, again, there's like a little bit of a ridge thing here, so I'm anticipating having to do some putty work, but nothing major, nothing really outside the normal bounds for a trumpeter kit. Up here, this is the only area that's a bit frustrating where the lip of the chin scoop is a little bit bigger diameter-wise than the actual fuselage itself, so I'm going to have to get in here, probably pre-knock some of these rivets a little bit deeper and then get in here and basically sand this down so it all fits. You can kind of see right at the bottom there is that little little tiny lip. Um, not a huge worry, I just basically want to avoid knocking out all the work I've done right at the opening. So with that I'm going to let this sit overnight and let all the Tamiya Extra Thin really set up and do its thing and then we'll pick back up. While the fuselage is setting up, I want to go ahead and start paying a little bit of attention to the wings, and in particular, the blast tubes. Now, I have a set of master blast tubes that I could replace these with, but honestly, that seems like a whole lot of work, and these things are pretty decent. The only thing that's annoying is the openings are very small. Fortunately, we have a way of dealing with that. Definitely improves the look, and I think I'm going to go maybe one size up from this as well. This is like a uh, 
I think this is like three quarters of a millimeter, maybe a 0.8. Okay, blast tubes are drilled out. They're looking pretty solid. One more thing to do before I call this bench session over. I want to go ahead and install the gear bays. Now on the flip side, these look like this. And I could go in here and add a bunch of wiring and really like detail the fuck out of them. But for two things, first of all, they're on the underside and they're not really gonna be all that visible. Second, with this kit, if I start, again, paying attention to super detailing and things like that, I will go down a rabbit hole and I will not finish it. So I'm trying to keep this more of a uh, kind of skate above that, that rabbit hole layer and just more have fun with it than anything else. And wiring up gear bays is not my idea of fun. I know it works for some people. It's just really not my thing. So then let's get into seeing how the wings all fit up and everything. All right, so once I got the fuselage together, I noticed something. And that is that the paint line that I, that I have going on in the radiator scoop is too far back. So that needs fixing. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and done all the masking in order to facilitate that. I've also decided that I'm just not a fan of it being interior green. I know that that is one of the options thrown around, but I'm just not liking it. And so I'm going to go with one of my other options that I mentioned before I painted this some good old silver lacquer. First, it needs to get a quick coat of black just to kind of unify everything. So now it's all black. Yippee. All right, now it's time to silver this up. Okay, we're looking pretty good. But I'm gonna give it a second to kind of dry and hit it with another coat just to be sure. And here we go. Scoop internals have been sorted. Awesome. So the next thing I'm going to deal with is knocking down this upper bulge on the cowl a little bit. And for this, we're going to use some good old Infini sanding sticks. These things are nice and firm, so they hold well. I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to get on camera just because I have to like maneuver it around to see it. But basically, we're just going to have fun doing this. Okay, so shit has been sanded down on the upper cowl. Shit has been sanded around the chin scoop underneath. Back down here. And across the top. And on the instrument panel combing. So I'm going to set this aside and play with the wings for a little bit. Now the only reason that I'm taking all this shit apart right now because I still have some little bits of cleanup I got to do. Removing a few sprue gates, things like that. Okay, the wings are ready for glue. Okay, so at this point, I should probably slow up and apply putty, do all the cleanup, all that shit, but fuck it. I want to glue things. So when you're gluing the wings in, a couple of things. First of all, you want to install the front first and then kind of lower it down onto the fuselage. 
these photo etch strips, we'll probably want to catch. So you need to push them in a little bit for the wing to drop. And then this central boom thing that forms the belly of the aircraft kind of clips in right along this brake line here and then sits flush with the fuselage down here. So that's all well and good. That's now glued in place. So much noise. Okay, so basically this thing sits like this naturally and then when you apply a little bit of dihedral pressure everything sits wonderfully. So I think I'm going to let that belly join thing kind of sit for a minute. Then we'll come back and we'll glue the wings. Alright, so with the help of a little bit of tape I've gone ahead and closed up the wing roots pretty nice and tight. Now it's time to come in here with our good friend Tamiya Extra Thin. Don't be shy. Get in here and really close this shit up. While we let this sit, how about I go ahead and get started on stabilizers. Okay, first we've got the rudder, which fits together quite well actually. It's nice to see. It does not appear to be hinged in a way that lets it move, but that's fine. Wasn't really intending to anyway. No real gap showing up in the back of it, which is also nice. It's always a pain in the ass when you're gluing trailing edges together and they are thick. You get that stupid little... It looks like you literally just put two bar bars together and there's a little tiny gap between them and no matter how you squeeze, you can't get it to really close. That's not appearing to be a big issue with this thing. Maybe a tiny little bit down here by the trim tab. But that is literally it. Once again, Trumpeter's doing the thing where they put all the sprue gates on kind of both the leading edge and on the inside portion. I kind of wish they would just pick one. Make life a lot easier. also fits together quite well. A little bit of cleanup on the outside edge here. Elevators have all kinds of little trim tabs all over them. The cool thing is that they are one piece. So apart from cleanup, nothing really else to worry about. The only place you kind of have to watch out is Right in here on this angled edge, there is a bit of a mold seam going on. Alright. Let's get this fucker glued together. Start on the inside. Okay, so the stabilizers are on, and I will just say, these things are fucking tight as hell. I went on a little mini rant a few weeks ago about the uh, Edward P-51 having some slightly floppy horizontal stabilizers, and these things are the opposite of that. <laughs> they are nice and tight, and they're not going anywhere, which is lovely to see. So, let's go ahead and lock these puppies in. Try 
I'm gonna lock in the other one too. So that way I can set this down and use opposing forces. Real fun comes when just kind of drop the elevators in. And the elevators actually have a nice little droop to them naturally. They're not uh, set up to articulate, but that little droop is pretty cool to see. And then the rudder, which is going to be painted separately because it's going to get the uh, French tricolor treatment. Let's see, I had it fitting earlier. There we go. So there's the rudder and the tail assembly. All in place. Awesome. Starting to look like a P40 now. Clear that side. Go. All right, so as you can see, it's a tight fit and it makes it want to kind of bow up a little bit. But it fits on the ends, which is what counts. This end locked in place. Aim over here. And then we're going to let that sit. Now before I go completely crazy, there's one other thing I want to do. And that is, I need to put something behind the radiator scoop here because you can see through it from certain angles. And I'm sure it'll go completely dark once we put more shit down. At the same time, just assume not fight it. So I'm going to take a piece of foam, water it up all nice like. Shove it up in here. And so you can't really see it through there, obviously. But it'll just be in there, keeping stuff from flying around, keeping the fuselage from looking like a giant gaping hole. Right, this is kind of the insert between the wing and the fuselage and the radiator chin. This is going to be an interesting fit dynamic, isn't it? You can already tell. I guess I'm going to be sanding that piece down a little bit there. Not sure how to fight that little tiny lip. Looks like once the glue goes in and kind of softens it up, it can get in there. All right, now we've got this little wing root leading edge of the gear bay area piece that goes in. The fit is not exactly perfect but it's close enough and we can get in there and play with various abrasives and fillers to make everything happy. Not the easiest angle to see what's going on either. This side over here is a much closer fit. It just needs a little bit of pressure in to seat perfectly. All right, so the P40 is pretty much together at this point. And before I call this segment a wrap, I want to look at one more aspect. So this is the prop blade that Trumpeter gives you with the P40. And I went and looked online, and it's the prop blade they give you with all of the new P40s. So the F, the E, and the N. And this is frustrating because it looks a lot more like a prop that you would see with a... P40B or P40C and while they did continue using a narrow cord prop into the E and the F they also switched out midway through so once you get to the N we're, we're way off at that point also you know looking at props off of like an E for example this looks nothing like them <laughs> um, it's, it's just like it's super toothpicky down here it flares out maybe a bit much and then it gets really really narrow and just yeah, and so I went digging, and I looked up my Hasegawa-E, and there is its prop. 
which is definitely not the uh, it's definitely not the wide cord that you would see on an N. So Hasegawa still fucks things up if you buy the N. You're still dealing with this prop, but it's much better than this one. So because I have two props and two spinners and all that good stuff. I figure, what the hell, let's go ahead and try and do something with this, right? The first thing is first, and that is that the trumpeter spinner does not fit the Hasegawa prop very well. And so it has to be kind of dug out a little bit. But once it is, it goes together pretty well. There's one of the, That one's a little bit more holy than I would maybe like, but that can sit on the bottom or something. But I don't want to mount it like that. I hate the whole sandwich prop mount system. It's not my favorite. So instead, we're going to try doing something a little bit crazy. Now, this sent me into a bit of a tizzy earlier today because it is possible to buy replacement props for P51s, P47s, every single fucking thing the Luftwaffe ever made. B24s, B25s, you name it. P61s. I believe there are new props already for the A26 that Hobby Boss launched. For the P40s, there is fuck all. Which just kind of reinforces the, uh, the belief that I've developed over the course of this build, both when I first started it and now that I've taken it back up, that the P-40 is the poorest served U.S. aircraft in terms of aftermarket, especially compared to its production volume and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now we've got this. Let's go ahead and punch some holes. These guys some one millimeter holes. That should provide enough space for some nice and chunky uh, mounting pegs. Okay, sorry to cut away there, but I think this can work. So to make this work, basically I had to do a couple things. First, as you saw, I cut off the prop to retain the mounting collar, drilled some holes, drilled some holes in the, pro in the Hasegawa prop blades, cut some one millimeter brass tubing, glued it into the prop blades, and they just slide right in like that. Nice and easy. Now the trick to this is going to be holding that prop collar at the right height to make all this work. Because when I first did it, it was sitting a little bit high, so I had to tape it down. When I tape it down, it seems to work just fine. Yoink into the hole like that. Yoink into the hole like that. I also, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the holes in the spinner were too small for the Hasegawa prop, so a little mini file got in there and kind of opened them up a little bit. But just to show, to show kind of a comparison here, 
that is a much more of a prop <laughs> than than this little toothpick bullshit going on over here. So I think I have my solution. Okay, so I know I said the prop was the last bit of this installment, but I have one more little thing to deal with. So French P40Fs and a lot of others had an aerial mast on the aft fuselage, kind of just at the very end of the scallop windows. And Trumpeter, in their infinite wisdom, didn't provide an antenna mast at all. Uh, as my buddy Adam Phillips says, Trumpeter always does dumb shit, <laughs> and this is definitely a case. So, fortunately I have a Hasegawa P40E that I am not going to be building anytime soon that I can kind of raid for parts, like the prop, and like an antenna mast. And so I've gone ahead and mounted this to a length of 05 millimeter tubing. Hold on, there's a... There was a bug there. Uh, and in order to fit it, I need to go ahead and drill a hole. So I've marked that with a little little pen. Gonna bring in my center punch here and start a little hole going. And there we go. We have an aerial. Also on the sides here, I don't want to tip it too much and spill the clear parts off. These little holes, the instructions would have you fill them with clear parts, which makes no sense because every reference photo I've, I've looked at, I cannot find anything existing right there. So that might be more a matter of we get to fill that in and erase it, which the clear parts might help with. Uh, we also get to deal with closing up the final apertures of the flaps back here. I've got pretty much the whole thing's glued except for the trailing edge, so come in and lock those in place. Also need to sort out the tail wheel, which is this little guy. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this installment of the P40F build. As you can see, the thing is pretty much together at this point. Uh, the Rudder and elevators and stuff are still separate. Obviously, the windscreen and canopy are still separate. Gear shuts haven't been installed or anything like that. But the main airframe is here. In the next installment, we're going to be focused on cleanup. Specifically, you know, seams and stuff from building. Uh, these bulges in the leading edge that are kind of the forward part of the gear bay also need some cleanup because if you look at reference photos... There is not that ridge there on top of the little bulge, and the bulge kind of blends seamlessly into the wing. So, you're going to have to figure something out there. And yeah, basically getting this thing pretty much to the point where it's ready for paint. Another fun thing we're going to get to deal with is these little holes here on the side, which the instructions would have you put clear parts in, which is very strange because I cannot find a single reference photo of a single P40 that has any sort of clear part need right there, or in fact any detail at all right there on the fuselage. They're pretty much blank as far as I can tell and there's a lot of exhaust staining and stuff such going on right there. Some of the more aggressive nose art actually even covers that so I'm gonna guess it's not a clear part <laughs> but the clear parts might help us fill that area. So yeah next installment is all about getting this thing little bit further down the road towards paint so thanks for following along hope some of this has been useful if you're building your own p40 or just watching for shits and giggles and i will catch y'all later